everyone, I'm Kelsey. I'm with Nextdoor. As Eugene said, we are a private social network for neighborhoods. Hopefully a lot of you guys might already be using Nextdoor because we're pretty big in the Bay Area. The company was co-founded in 2010 by a group of entrepreneurs who looked at the landscape of social networking and said, hey, social networking is doing a great job connecting us to people around the world, but it's not doing a lot for our local communities. I think there might be a big opportunity there to use technology to bring back a sense of community to the neighborhood. And so on Nextdoor, any neighborhood across the country can create a website to connect with their neighbors about anything that matters in the neighborhood, whether that's giving advice on local service providers, talking about lost pets, talking about a rash of break-ins in the neighborhood, wide range of topics um, of conversations go on on Nextdoor. Uh, one of the things I definitely wanted to point out is Privacy is a really big deal on Nextdoor. Every website is private. You have to verify that you live within the boundaries of the Nextdoor website before joining. Uh, all of the websites are password protected and everything, uh, nothing is, not everything, nothing is indexed by Google. Um, so I can't see your Nextdoor website and you can't see mine. So let's jump in and actually take a look at the iOS app. Uh, this website that I'm actually already logged into is a demo site. <laughs> Um, so if I start right here, actually I'm not in the news feed. If I land right here, I'm on the news feed, and so you can kind of see an example of the type of things people talk about on Nextdoor. So someone's talking about a car break-in, someone's talking about a potluck they're, they're organizing for St. Patrick's Day. Here's an urgent alert that went out, and urgent alerts are a message that goes out onto the news feed and is delivered via SMS text message. So we see urgent alerts go out all across the country around severe weather in a neighborhood or a missing child. Uh, so a great way to get information out quickly. Here's someone asking for a recommendation for a leaf blower and a neighbor saying, I have one you can borrow. A lot of sharing happens on the platform. If I scroll down a little bit more, you can see some of the other posts people are talking about. Another lost dog, a Halloween party, Tons of lost dogs found on that store all the time. <laughs> lost cats, <laughs> you name it. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so when we look at actually the breakdown of the content on Nextdoor, uh, there's a wide range. We estimate about 25% of the posts on Nextdoor are related to local recommendations. About 15% are similar to what you would see on Craigslist, people buying, selling, giving away items to neighbors. 20% of the content usually is related to crime and safety. We have actually partnered with over 135 cities across the country, a lot in the Bay Area where we integrate the police department into the platform so the police can use it as virtual neighborhood watch to give updates to people in the community um, about crime and safety and emergency preparedness type of information. Um, if I want to create a post, I can go in here, easily create a post. It's well integrated with photos. Because of my connection here, I'm not going to actually go through that process. But nice post box. If you jump over to the nav bar here, you can see everything's well categorized. Every post is categorized by topic. You can also develop groups within your own neighborhood, so you can see that there. If I jump up here into the map and directory, um, every neighborhood has a neighborhood map. Um, our head of engineering led up engineering at Google Maps for a long time, so the mapping component is, is pretty advanced here. You can see everyone who, with this map example, the, the green parcels that are on next door, the red they haven't joined yet. Um, if you jump in here into the list, this is basically replace what people used to put on their fridge of all the neighbors in the neighborhood. And so you can sort this by uh, name or by street address, so you can discover people in your neighborhood. If I jump into Jeremy's profile here, I can learn a little bit about Jeremy. The only thing you have to reveal on your profile on Nextdoor is your full name and the street that you live on. And so we do force true identity and we find that that really elevates the level of conversation and the interaction on Nextdoor. If you jump back here, I go down here into invite. We give people a lot of different ways to invite their neighbors to join the site. Great. And one of the ones I wanted to point out, obviously you can invite people over email, text message. <laughs> And we actually will send out postcards on your behalf to people in your neighborhood to join the site. And we have had to create a lot of offline mechanisms to help people grow their neighborhood websites because most people don't know their neighbors. And so if you don't know your neighbors, you probably don't have their email address. Um, in closing, uh, we're now being used by over 26,000 neighborhoods in the country. We estimate that that's about, about one in six neighborhoods are now on 
the platform, and I think we've been overwhelmed by, re by the response, and we believe that there's a lot of ways our neighbors can help us. Uh, they just need an easy way to connect with one another. So happy to answer any questions you guys have. So the question is, how do you define a neighborhood? So we actually work with our members to draw all of the neighborhood boundaries. So when you when someone goes to start a Nextdoor website, they land on Nextdoor.com, they enter in their address, and if there's a website already created, they'll pop into that existing site. If not, they will be asked to name the site and determine the boundaries. And we have a pretty advanced mapping tool and data within the platform that will we'll kind of guide people <coughs> if you think your neighborhood is this. But we're actually kind of doing this really cool crowdsourcing thing on the site right now where we're using the data that's available, but also using humans to define these neighborhoods because there's not something off the shelf you can buy for all the neighborhoods in the country, especially at the size we make them, which they're typically around 1,500 households a site. So in the Bay Area, we have thousands of next door sites. So it wouldn't be one just for Palo Alto. They would be probably a handful. Yes, right there. I was pointing at you with that, for sure. Okay. Uh, I just want to say I'm a satisfied user of the next door. Uh -huh. We're doing good uses uh, thing, and we're right about the kind of uh, events that show up on there. Oh, good. Um, I also noticed you do send us a notification of other neighbors, neighborhoods that are doing their thing. I don't know why that's the case, so I'm just kind of curious. In other words, we're in one neighborhood here. I'm getting announcements from other neighborhoods. Yeah. So this year, actually about a year ago exactly, we launched a feature called Nearby Neighborhood. So when Nextdoor started, they were all individual Nextdoor sites. And as we grew, we realized that if you have more sites in Palo Alto, it made sense for actually all the sites to communicate in Palo Alto in certain circumstances. So for example, if you lose your dog, you might want to post it to your Nextdoor website and the Nextdoor website next to yours. But there's a lot of customization around that tool and the privacy settings are different. So you can't actually see all the content in a nearby neighborhood, but you can share content between nearby neighborhoods and you can't see all the profiles of <coughs> members in nearby neighborhoods unless they decide to reveal that to their nearby neighborhoods, if that makes sense. Yes? How do you make money? So we currently do not make money. Um, <laughs> we will one day though, I hope. Uh, so and we, so I'll tell you um, where we're at with that. So, so we launched two years ago. We're lucky we're, we're venture backed by a lot of some of the big names here, which is great. So we have a little bit of runway. Um, and we anticipate we will use the service to allow local businesses to connect with local residents. And so local advertising, big business there. And hopefully if we get the type of adoption we, we want to see, um, we could be really really valuable and we could allow people to target advertising on an extremely hyper local basis. I think you've had your hand up for a while with the best. Uh, so if, uh, if my neighbor moves out of the neighborhood, uh, what is the process of managing that on the campus? So the question was if your neighbor moves out of the neighborhood, what happens? So the process is, if a neighbor moves, they should relocate to a new next door neighborhood. If for some reason they don't, we can actually suspend their account and <coughs> deal with it. But a lot of these sites are actually, they're, they're self-managed, um, but most people, they don't want to stay in a neighborhood that they no longer live in. It's not useful to them. Um, and so usually they move or they deactivate their account. Yes? So how do you pay for someone in the next right? <coughs> Yes. So the question was, how do we verify and can you be a member of more than one neighborhood? Uh, we verify a handful of ways. Uh, we verify by looking at credit card billing addresses. We can verify that way instantly. We can also look at your mobile phone number and if that's it's tied to the address, uh, landlines we can look at. Uh, we also will send, again, physical postcards to people, people's addresses with a verification code that they get a few days later and then can go back in and put in. And you can, we have a lot of people who are members of several sites, their own site, and then maybe where they have a vacation home or something like that. You just need separate email addresses. <coughs> last one? Okay. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions after we're done.